Uh, what we're doing here today is we are having a photo shoot for Double uh, XL magazine. One of our favorites who's always been a big supporter of Power and the Power Universe now, thanks to Power co-creator and mastermind marketing genius, Curtis 50 Cent Jackson. We've got myself, Makai, Michael Rainey, and uh, Meech, and of course, Curtis 50 Cent Jackson here. So we're, uh, we're promoting the world and showing everybody that uh, we got a long way to go. Fifth is the reason that I, I can pay my bills. I've been knowing Fifth for eight years now. Um, one thing that I will say is that Fifth is the first boss that I've ever had who gave me a hug upon meeting me and thanked me for being there. I said to 50 in Power Season 1, I said, wow, Fifth, this casting is really great. And he was incredibly involved with every aspect of the Power Show. And I said, how did you put all of these people together, Fifth? And he said, I'm not afraid of talent. Fifth lifts himself up and he lifts us all up with him. He never leaves anybody out. He's the most accessible person I've ever encountered in this industry. And he does not stop. Cannot stop, will not stop. And I love being around that energy and I'm grateful to be around it. It's exciting because when we first met and we was in like an office talking, I told him then we were going to go seven seasons. He did. And then I know when I got the talent there to do it, I'm like, this is going to work. Like, that's what made me so excited about it at that point. And then in my life, I didn't have a person in my life that was consistent. So every time I would go somewhere, I'd be like, what you doing, Joe? <laughs> and I'd rather take them to the, the event with me, like a plus one, and we just hang out, than to be there with a girl that I don't feel like I'm gonna be around. I'd rather it benefit his career because he's in the right room and, and mix with the right people than somebody that is, is not gonna mean anything to because they're not gonna connect. They don't have the talent for it to work. I also think that uh, Fifth truly sees many steps ahead. I think that it's especially when we first started season one of Power. The majority of us were just happy to be there. Wow, we're getting, you know, we're doing what we love. We're getting paid for what we love. So we're here right now and we're in the present. That's important for your, yourself as an actor to stay in the present, kind of enjoy that moment. But Fifth is just thinking strategically many steps ahead of that. I'm bringing him here because this person is going to be here that's involved with this, that's good for the network. And he's dealing with uh, not only with stars, but with Time Warner Cable at the time or AT&T and knowing that putting these people in very strategic places. So he really took his role, not only as a creative uh, producer, but as an executive producer very seriously and, um, and showed it. But he took it very lightly too, so we never knew what he was doing. <laughs> but he knew what he was doing. He's gonna forever be Tommy, no matter what. When he, he did a, a thing on, uh, was Ozark? And mm -hmm. it, was, it was like, yo, yo Tommy was on Ozark. <laughs> yeah. They're not looking at it like it's a different character. They see Tommy. When they see him, they're gonna do that for his entire career, like Pacino. I take playing the role of Tommy and being always recognized as Tommy in some ways as a badge of honor, uh, because I think that the black community specifically calls out bullshit pretty quickly. And if I didn't have my uh, T's crossed and my I's dotted, and there wasn't, I didn't bring truth to that character, that the character would not have been accepted, period. So that's better than any award. Um, Fifth always says you can't deposit an award in the bank. So my, my awards get deposited in the bank every episode, and I'm grateful for that, too. Uh, I also think that Fifth told me something literally after season two, and he told me, that's it, Joe. Game over. You're Tommy for good. He goes, 10 years from now, you're going to be winning your Oscar, and be like, and somebody's going to go, you know the one where Tommy plays the doctor. The way New York was a character in power, Chicago is in force. Knowing Tommy's temperament, the character already, knowing that he's head first with everything that he does. It's just exciting out the gate. Like from episode one, they're gonna be looking at it like, I, I gave Raising Canaan five. I said, by episode five, they would say, I kind of like this better than I like the original Power. Because Power, they, it was a lot of stuff going on and it was like pink sneakers running around. You didn't understand why it was happening until I actually started to come out of jail. And you realize I was orchestrating it from jail and behind it the whole time. When Raising Canaan, it took those five episodes, I think, to immerse them in the period. And that fifth episode was fire. Eve Rivera's episode yeah, it was, was good. fire. And Eve directed the fifth episode. I said by then they would actually feel the nostalgia of the, the clothing, the music, everything about the show being the 90s. And that was, I called it the golden era in the beginning, because that, to that for me, the 90s was like... Golden era of hip hop. It was just crazy. Like everything is just great. The music, everything is a whole level of different energy at that point. So when you get to Force, I think the coolest thing that is that's missing from those other things and it being in the same time period, it comes on with the same intensity, adult criminal activity versus college kids. How we think of power, the natural progression of the power show turns into Power Book 4. Right. Power Book 4 picks up on 
the original in, in the right. same vein. Right, okay. Yeah.